Good morning, church. Good morning. We are, we are beginning to have more buzz in the church. I'm sorry, you guys quieted down for a minute. We more comfortable silence. So we're used to having to really work to get your attention. And we're continuing to stay in the grace mode for all those that have not been in our schools or are not ready to come back into our midst. Amen, right? But we're also praying for them to uh, have that continual tugging at their heart for for assembling themselves as, as recording scripture in this way to worship. I'm just mindful, I'm not getting my spiritual sense from some of the comics, but uh, and, and going through some of them this morning, I love seeing the wife talk to her husband and saying, are you really going to wear that polka dotted mask with that flannel uh, shirt that you've got on? Are you going to wear that together? And Jody and I did some radical thir uh, Friday night. It was our 39th wedding anniversary. And we made a reservation and got into a restaurant. And we went there and sat down, and it was very apparent that, that masks had become a fashion statement. As we had, you know, a server with a with whiskers and a cat presence on. And, you know, it was just, it's just times are different. I'm, I'm just talking about it in a sense to bring some normalcy that um, uh, we have been through many different things and we will continue to embrace each other um, as two are willing to do that and we certainly want to come into his presence. I am blessed today in a way that uh, I'm, I'm being very personal and I know a lot of times worship leading we're really uh, taught not to do that but I want to be very uh, honest with you and say this last week has been one of the hardest weeks in a long, long time for me. It was just physically, it was very hard, and we've got some big things going on in our HOA community, and every evening was tied up with that. And it's a short week, right? With a lot of rain, that makes a difference in my work, so a lot of things just are all jammed. Bob's nodding a little bit on that one. He knows what I'm referring to with rain in a short week. And, um, but one thing that happened was Wednesday night, I was not able to be a practice. I was just exhausted and, and actually still working during practice. And, and I'm blessed today that I've got, there's three worship leaders, all of you are worship leaders, but there's three worship leaders. So I came, I came here today with things all prepared and just able to worship, just like you get to every Sunday. <laughs> and I was just uh, really enjoyed that. And I thank, thank the worship leaders that are part of Grace. Uh, including yourself. So I wish Jody was playing behind things, but I know she wants to share something too. So um, let's get you tied back into why we're here, why the passage of 1 Peter is important, and let, I'll let Jody do the intro. Ashley, we, we talked at worship team Wednesday night. Okay, when you think of the church calendar, what's a couple of holidays you think of or special times, events, in the church calendar? Easter. And Christmas. Those are the biggies, right? Thanksgiving's a biggie. That's true. That's true. And we try to honor that. There's another one that we don't talk so much about, at least in this denomination, and um, actually not as much anywhere around, and that's Pentecost. And on our calendar today is Pentecost Sunday. And I didn't know that much about it, honestly, the details. I mean, I know generally the big picture, the Holy Spirit came. So I started doing a little research. So I'm not an expert, and if any of you know it's different, but from what I read and know, Jesus, the resurrected Jesus was on earth about 40 days, is what we're told in scripture. And when Jesus was ready to ascend, he told his disciples, that close group that was 11 at the time, to go to Jerusalem, to be together, and to wait for the promise. As God would have it, it was during the Feast of the Harvest. And there were lots of people in Jerusalem. But basically they were told, go be together and wait for me. Go home. Have you heard that thing in the last couple months? Go home. Stay there. <laughs> for how long? I don't know. But go there. And I thought about that. That's what happened to the disciples. Go there. Just be there. Wait for me. Well, to the best of our ability, it was about 10 days later, or 50 days, which is where we get from Easter to now, Pentecost happened. That was the birth of this, the church gathering together. And God worked in miraculous ways, giving them a gift of tongues, where all those people that were in Jerusalem for the Feast of the Harvest from all over the place, these silly Galileans, 
They were saying things they could understand. And what Peter and the others were saying was the way of salvation. They were saying, God is the promise. So this morning we're going to take just the first couple songs right now and kind of think about that. We have the Holy Spirit. But we think about they were waiting for it. And even though it's Holy Spirit is in us from salvation, we have to be willing to be receptive, to recognize that He is a part of us. So let's take just a minute and thank God that He sent the Holy Spirit to us. I'm going to be very quiet here for a little bit when we stand. And I trust that you will feel the same peace that I did as we start in this way by welcoming the Holy Spirit. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I taste it and see. 
that God fulfilled his promises. And we have many promises of God to declare. So we're going to claim another one right now. Downstairs, starting next Sunday too. Um, nothing's going to look the same, of course, but um, we'll, we'll still be able to get together. And we'll just have to sit farther apart. And um, but we want to we want to get back into the Word. We want to get back into um, as normal as we could possibly um, do. So um, also, just one other thing. A sad a sad note. Um, Spring Valley Bible Camp is not having students this year, um, and so that's kind of a it's kind of a bummer for. For us, and it's kind of a bummer for the camp, and so um, please keep Dan and um, the staff up there in your prayers. 
Um, please pray for the finances of the camp because we just, I mean, they just, that's what, the campers is what supplies the money for the year. Uh, if they don't have that, it's going to be a tough year for them. So um, keep them in your prayers um, as well. So um, once again, offering plates are in the back. You can um, put your offering in as you leave or as you come or however you'd like to do that. And uh, let me offer a word of prayer and we'll continue in our worship. Father, thank you for this day that you've given us today. We thank you for the sunshine. We thank you for the beauty that comes with spring and the flowers and the peonies and the lilacs and, the, and, the, and everything that's just coming up. And, and it's just it's a new life and it's a new birth. And Father, you've given us new life. You've given us new birth. And we thank you in Jesus' name. One of the privileges is being able to sit under Pastor Doug and the leadership of the gym to be taught by him. And uh, he's normally out in advance of knowing where we're going you know, in Scripture, where he's going to be teaching from, which helps us as worship leaders to be able to make sure that the songs actually um, are pointing us to those same thoughts and it's not disjointed. And so I asked him this morning, I said, Pastor, uh, when did you get led to be going into First Peter? And he said, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, I said, well, I thank the Holy Spirit for being moving in your midst. And uh, I was looking in First Peter and knowing that you guys just got the first two verses last week. And, and uh, I was reading from my lifetime of study, one of the notes that I have to myself written here as just a summary of Peter. I wrote, the purpose is to offer encouragement to suffering Christians. Well, just to know how that encouragement happens amongst suffering. I talked with Dave Walker on the way to church this morning, just so I said, can I give an update to the church? Because both he and Jeannie, I think most of you know, are in the hospital with COVID. And he said, wow, God has truly been working in our lives. Neither one of us are in intensive care anymore. We've both been moved on to a floor just four doors from one another. And would you believe this walk? Would you believe this walk? <laughs> the church, the people here at the hospital, they allowed me to go down to Jeannie's room and talk to her for an hour. Oh, wow. That's not the normal. That's not protocol. So to be encouraged amongst our suffering, pretty easy to see that. God will not allow us to be tempted to mock beyond what we are able, but will the temptation also make a way to escape it? That what? we may be able to bear it. And that's why we're going into 1 Peter. That's why pastor's taking us there, so that we might be able to bear the times and keep having the hope because there's someone that's gone before us that truly has made a way for us. I'm going to let you stand because you're going to want to here in a little bit. Sarah's going to start us out in this next song. And as you're ready to sing, just join in singing with her. Stand if you would like.
do means absolutely nothing without our surrender. Father, in amongst this time, in amongst present and future times, Father, I pray personally that I will always come to you surrendered. And I pray that this church will surrender to your will and you will work amongst us. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. You're welcome to move freely amongst us. You're certainly welcome to open our eyes as we open Scripture now and speak to us. Use whatever words you want to say to the pastor and whatever words you want to say directly. In Jesus' name, amen. We began a journey into 1 Peter last week and didn't get very far, pushing the verses. Um, but there's a lot in there. And in those verses, we see that Peter is talking to some displaced people, some, some people who are, who are out of their norm, um, some people who have gone back to places where they have been living and now find themselves being strangers even in those places. And the Bible talks about being in the world but not being of the world. Jesus prayed and said, Father, I don't pray that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them while they're in the world. So we understand what it means to be in the world but not of the world. And, and, and it's a, it's a, it's a, it could be a precarious place. Peter's praising God today for, for removing us from the world, for giving us new birth. Look at what it says, 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning in verse 3. He says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to His great mercy, He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept for you who by God's power are being guarded through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though for now, for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials. So that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though tested by fire, may be found to result in the praise and the glory and the honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Through whom, though, whom you, though, though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you not, do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Imagine yourself in a situation where life was turned upside down. Imagine yourself in a situation where people were telling you to stay home. Stay away from your friends. You can't get a haircut. You can't go to the gym to work out. You can't go to the grocery store, really. But you have to go to the grocery store. Imagine yourself in a situation where, where life was, was out of whack, where life wasn't like it was supposed to be, where life wasn't like it used to be. Everyone in one way or another, in this last four or five months, have struggled. Some of us can't see loved ones in nursing homes. Some of us are having loved ones who are being taken from us by this virus, and we haven't been able to see them in their last moments, in their last times. There's lots to complain about. There's lots to be afraid about. There's lots to worry about. There's lots to fret about. There's lots to, to to try to solve and to try to think about. There's only one thing that's important. There's only one thing that's going to make a difference in, you, in eternity. The Bible says this too shall pass. We've been through these kinds of things before in our lives. We've been through World War I. We've been through World War II. We've been through the Civil War. We've been through all kinds of trials that hit our nation. And every one of them has passed. And we've regained our footing and we've gone on. The Lord wants us to know that in the midst of this trial, in the midst of this struggle, that He is with us. That He is here. That He is, that he is closer than you can possibly imagine. The songs that we sang this morning, the Spirit of Christ lives 
in you if you are born again. And Peter says, I want to praise God for that. I want to praise God because He's given us a living hope. I want to praise God because He's caused something to happen inside of us that is, that is absolutely miraculous. That He has sent His Spirit to live in His people and He's given us new birth. This whole new birth thing comes from John chapter 3. A man named Nicodemus, a Pharisee, a religious leader in the days of Jesus, had been watching Jesus and watched Him do the things that He did and watched Him heal the sick and watched Him, you know, cause the blind to see and listen to His teachings and do something deeper about His teachings, something more real about His teachings than that, that, that than what He had already learned. And He came to Jesus one night because He didn't want to be seen. And His question was, how do I, how do I get the kingdom of heaven? What does it, what does it take? And Jesus said to him, he said, Truly I say to you, Nicodemus, that you must be born again. And Nicodemus doesn't understand this, and of course, we wouldn't understand it either. So Nicodemus says, how can a man enter his, re-enter his mother's womb and be born again? That's a, physically, that's just not going to work, Jesus. And Jesus said, no, I'm not talking about that. He said, you must be born of, 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 of water and of the Spirit. In other words, he says, Jesus goes on, he says, that which is that which is of the flesh is flesh. That which is of the spirit is spirit. And God is looking for those who will worship Him in spirit and in truth. He's, he's looking for those that, that will receive new birth. The Bible says if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. New, 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 new. All the way through the New Testament. It's talking about the new covenant. It's talking about new life. It's talking about a new way of seeing things. It's talking about a new way of living. It's all about being new. It's all about being transformed. It's all about being made new and brought back into the image that God intended for us to be in the first place. Brought back to the image of Christ. Made new in our spirits. Made new in our minds. Made new physically, emotionally. Made new in our relationships. Made new. The old is gone. Let it go. Just let it go. Because God has something incredible for us. He has new life that He wants to give us. Number one on your outline, new birth is a gift from God. He says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to His great mercy, He has caused us, He has caused us to be born again. Born again. Born again, not just for, not just for kicks, not just for, you know, because God can do that, but born again to a living hope. To a living hope. Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. When we receive a gift, we don't expect to have to pay for that gift. Only a, only a non-gift. I'm a gift person. That's, that's my love language. And, and I, so I like to get gifts, and I like to, to give gifts. And, and I have never felt like any gift that I've ever given to another person, I have never felt like they should pay me back somehow for that gift. I've never felt like I was giving to them to, to put them in debt to me or to make them owe me something. A gift is a gift. And you have two choices. You can either say yes and you can receive that gift or you can say no and you cannot receive that gift. That's the only choices. It's not how much is this gift going to cost me because gifts don't cost anything. Right? They're, 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 they're free. That's, that's the whole point. So when, when God gives us this gift of new life, it's, it's not something that we, can, that we can pay back, and it's not something that we can pay for. It's a gift from God. Now, of course, those of us who are gift people, we like to give gifts, and then, and then the best thing that you can do with a gift is use it for what it was intended for, right? If somebody gives you... If somebody gives me a new fishing reel, 
right? I'm gonna, and, and, and I'm, I got it the box and I'm looking at it, it's like, oh man, this is a really nice reel. I, and you know, you, I mean, I'm, that reel isn't gonna be taken out of the box and set on a shelf, and then every time I go, oh, so-and-so gave me that. Look, look, look at that reel at so-and-so. No! That reel is going from the box, on a rod, string put on it, and it's going into the water. Right? Because it's meant to be used. To put it on a shelf would be to misuse the gift. I fear that so many, sometimes so many Christians, we, we, we put the gift that God has given us on a shelf. And we don't use it. And we don't experience it. And we don't enjoy it. And we don't, and we don't give it away to other people. God has given us a new life, and that new life is to be experienced. It's to be experienced in the way we walk, in the way we talk. It's to be experienced in our attitude, to have an attitude of gratitude, and to be able to praise God at any point in time. New birth. New birth. New birth brings with it a guaranteed inheritance, number two. He has, he has raised Christ from the dead, and He says, to give you an inheritance that is imperishable. In other words, it's, it, it won't deteriorate. Have you ever noticed how things deteriorate? I mean, things wear out, right? Things that are man-made ultimately, eventually wear out. Cars rust, shoes get stuffed and holes in them, you know, jeans get holes in them if you wear them long enough to get holes in them. Some people start off with the holes already, so they you know, just save a step. But things wear out over time. This inheritance that, that God has given us through Jesus Christ will never wear out. It won't deteriorate. It's the same the day that you receive it, and it'll be that way throughout eternity. It never wears out. It's never undefiled. In other words, it's never, it's never stained. It's never made dirty. It's always pure. It's always right. It's never something that you have to take back. It's never something that you have to attend to. It's never something that you have to wash. It's a perfect gift. And it's a perfect inheritance. And it's kept in heaven for you by God and by His power. It's a promise. It's a promise that God makes to us. Jesus said, if I go to prepare a place for you, I promise, I promise that I will come in and I will receive you unto myself, that where I am, you may be also. It's a promise. It's a gift of an inheritance. But it's a promise. And it's a promise that's backed up by the strength and the power of Almighty God. It's not, it's not a philosophic promise. It's not a promise that's, that's dependent upon something that I would do or something that you could do. It's God who made the promise. And it's God who's going to keep the promise. And it's God who's going to fulfill the promise. And there's no greater power. And there's no greater place to put your hope and to put your faith and to put your trust than in God and His promises. Number three, new birth brings hope in the midst of suffering. Here's something that we need right now. In the midst of struggle, in the midst of trial, hope. Paul says, in, or Peter says, in this you rejoice now, though for a little while, if necessary, for a little while, some people think it's been a long while, but for a little while, in the compare, in, if you compare it to eternity, and you compare it to the, the you know, the, the, the millennia, in a little while, okay, so that could just be this long or this long. The Bible, you know, the Bible says, the Bible says that the day, that the, the, the day is like a thousand years, or a thousand years is like one day to God, right? So, in a little while, it makes sense if you think about that. In a little while, if necessary, you've been grieved by various trials so that, the, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, may be found to result in the praise and glory and honor at the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, hope. 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 I know that we're struggling right now. I know that. I understand that. And I, and I recognize that our world is, is in turmoil right now. And I understand that. 
And I see that, and I recognize that. But in the midst of that, in the midst of the struggles, in the midst of the trials, in the midst of the tribulation, and, and no matter what it is, it may not be a virus, it may be something else, it may be, it may be unemployment caused by a virus, or it may be, you know, um, um, the, the, the whatever. In the midst of it, those of us who have new life also have hope. We have hope. Because God has made a promise to us. And He's going to complete that promise and He's going to keep that promise. And so whatever we look at around us pales in comparison to the glory of God and the things that He has set forth for us. There's a new day coming. There's a new day. There's a new day. And God is prepared. And God is going to see to it that it happens just exactly the way He declared it was going to happen. See, God has a plan. He has a blueprint. He's not just up there willy-nilly. God knows exactly what He's doing and He knows exactly when He's doing. And God was not taken by surprise when COVID-19 hit the world. It didn't shock Him. It didn't, it, didn't, it didn't throw Him off at all. He knew it and He has made plans for it. We've got to trust in something bigger than ourselves because we are just not big enough. Amen. We're just not. And we try to be, you know, and we try to, to, to fix everything and we try to make everything right, but it's just, it's impossible. It's impossible. Number four. New birth. In new birth, we walk by faith. We walk by faith. Here's what Peter says. He says, though you have not seen him, you have not seen Jesus, yet you love him. And though you do not see him now, you believe in and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory. This morning, when the praise team was up here, when we were singing, we were rejoicing in the Lord. We were doing this verse. We were rejoicing with joy inexpressible. There's parts, look, we, we can't sing big enough, we can't sing loud enough, we can't speak bold enough, we don't have enough, we don't have enough to be big enough. To ever match the glory of God. Amen. The Bible says to come boldly before the throne of grace. Not to boss. Not to tell God what to do, but to worship. To worship. To acknowledge that He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You see, it's all a matter of perspective. And it's a matter of focus. And what is your focus on? What are you thinking about? What are you letting your mind dwell on? Are you, are you letting your mind dwell on news reports and all the, all the stuff? That, or are you letting your mind dwell on the things of God? The Bible says, seek ye first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. The peace, the joy, the hope comes from focusing on Christ. It comes from living out of that new birth. Paul says, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loves me and delivered Himself up for me. That's my hope. That God loves me. And that Jesus Christ died on the cross. And if I was the only person on the planet that ever lived, Jesus would have died for me. That's how powerful this is. That's the reality of it. That's the reality. That's my hope. That's where I put my focus. That's where I, that's where I have to go in times of craziness, in times of struggle. Number five, new birth has a positive outcome. Obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your soul. So, so look at this new birth for, for just a second. It's because it's because it can kind of be, it, we can kind of get confused about this. New birth starts out with conversion. Okay, we can see this in, in chapter one, verse three. New, it starts out with conversion. The Holy Spirit who is pursuing us makes us come to a point where we understand that we're, that something is missing in our lives. However that looks, that we, that we haven't given you. 
that, that, that there's something bigger than us at work here. And we begin to investigate that. And the Holy Spirit begins to, begins to put us in places and show us things and bring people into our lives and begins to reveal that there is something more. And we find out that that something more is the Lord Jesus Christ. And we hear the gospel preached to us that Jesus died on the cross. That three days later, he rose from the grave, defeating death, hell, and the grave. And then he ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of the throne of God and lives to make intercession for us. These are the words that we hear, and we don't always necessarily understand them, but the Holy Spirit is just saying inside us, it's true, it's true, it's true, it's true. Follow this. Go there. Do that. Make that commitment. That's conversion. Our, our first encounter, our initial time that we, that we encounter God. Next, new birth continues with sanctification. And that's where we are right now. Sanctified. Being sanctified. Being transformed. Peter's going to go on to talk about being transformed by the renewing of your mind and, and, and the renewing of your spirit. And transformation comes as we, as we study Scripture, as we live the way God intended us to live, as we love other people the way that God loved us. Jesus said by this, they will know that you are my disciples if you love one another, caring for one another, reaching out to one another, encouraging one another. And launching one another when necessary. But being in that one another mindset, the mindset, the narcissistic mindset of it's all about me doesn't work in the kingdom of God. It just doesn't. It just doesn't. Because, quite frankly, it's not all about us. It's not all about me. And it's not all about you. It's all about what God has done through His Son. That's what it's about. It's about loving other people. It's about pouring out our lives. Jesus said, no greater love has a man than this, that he lay down his life for his brothers. Lay down our lives. Serving one another. Loving one another. That's what the sanctification is all about. It's about learning how to live the way God created and intends us to live. That's, that's a sanctification. And it happens from the moment of conversion to the moment that we step into glory. It's that we're in that sanctification. Where if you're here and you're listening to me and you're breathing, then you're in that sanctification process. And people are in different places. And some people have more work done on them than others. You know? But God's at work constantly, continually transforming us and changing us. Our job is to cooperate with Him. Our job is to say yes to His yeses and no to His no's. Our job is to follow Him. Our job is to be obedient. Our job is to walk in a manner worthy of our calling. That's our job. We have a responsibility in all of this. We can't just take this gift and put it on a shelf. It's meant to be lived. It's meant to be worn. It's meant to be shared. It's meant to be experienced. It's the gift of new life. And finally, this culminates in glory. It culminates in glory. There will be a day. There will be a day when the saints are called up yonder. There will be a day when we will stand before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. There will be a day. The Bible says every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It's going to happen. So, let's do it now. <laughs> and, let's, and let's anticipate it. And let's expect it. And let's live in that hope. And let's live in that, in, that, in that understanding and that knowledge that someday I will stand before the King of Kings and the Lord of all. Someday I will understand. Maybe if, if God allows me, I might understand how God made a camel. How cool would that be? Right? Or where the big bass hang out in the summer. <laughs> Come along, God. Go we will we will know things. And we will be and we will but we will be in the glory of God. The Bible says there's not even going to be a sun. Because God's glory will light us up. And will light the world. Number six. New birth has its roots 
in history. Peter goes on, he, he takes us back to the prophets. And he says, concerning the salvation, the prophets who prophesied about the grace that was to be yours, searched and inquired carefully. See, he takes us back to our roots. There, this, this came from someplace. And this, is, this is, didn't just happen. Jesus didn't just start this, you know, this thing. No, it came, it came from someplace. And we have to go back into the Old Testament and we have to go back into Genesis and Exodus and Leviticus and Numbers and 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel and 1 Kings and 2. We have to go back and look at Isaiah. We have to go back and look at Jeremiah. We have to go back and look at the things of the past to, to, and bring those things forward into the future so that we can understand fully who God is. We just completed a series on the names of God. And most of those names, all the names that we talked about, were found in the Old Testament. The character and the nature of God. That's where we learn about it. That's where we see Him in action. That's where we see Him doing the things. That, and then we move into the New Testament and we see Christ in action. And Jesus said, I only do the things I see the Father doing and I only say the things I hear the Father say. And so again, God's at work in the New Testament. And God is at work in our lives right now. And last but not least, number seven. New birth is to be passed on. So these, these Old Testament prophets, it was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but that they were serving you in this. So they were preaching ahead. They were looking at some... The, the people in the New Testament understood that Jesus was the Messiah because of the people in the Old Testament told them what the Messiah was going to be like. And so as part of our responsibility and part of the privilege that we have as followers of Christ is to continue to proclaim the message that He gave us. To continue to expound the truth that He gave us. To continue to live our lives in such a way that people see us and glorify our Father who is in heaven. That we continue to share the good news of Jesus Christ. If any, if any time in history we need a good news, it's now. It's now. And the good news is that God is bigger than COVID-19. Amen. And the good news is that Jesus Christ died on the cross to forgive us of our sins. And if we receive Him into our hearts, and if we, if we accept Him, if we commit our lives to Him, that He will place His Spirit within us and give us new life. What must you do to inherit the kingdom of heaven? You must be born again. You must. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the opportunity that we've had to be able to praise and worship you. And Father God, we give ourselves to you. Because there's nothing great. And there's nothing more important. We're living this new life that you've given us. To bring glory and honor and praise to you. As the pastor was going through that, um, I was mindful, I guess, of the tale of two rings to help me understand the bullet points of the message. The very last one must be passed on. I tell you that the diamond that's in my wife's engagement ring has been passed on. As a young man without money, I was thankful for that, that there was a diamond to be able to be put into a setting 39 plus years ago and to be passed on. But it was also the legacy of the grandmother and the faith of the grandmother that was also passed on. And then I also tell you that the ring on my finger that was put on my finger 39 years ago yesterday has only become precious, has only encouraged me through a refiner's fire. It did take the gold, it had to be separated from the stone, it had to be heated and have the dross taken off of it in order for it to be something that I could put and have precious on my finger. And so somehow Peter's word of encouragement, he uses the word of refiner's fire, that we have to go through song was brought to me last week. Let's continue to be mindful of it as we today. stand and sing about a purified heart.
to him, it is by free will, amen? So we can come to him with hearts that desire to be pure, to be cleansed. He wants to be our master. He wants to be Lord of us. But we have to surrender. So this is our prayer. Yeah.